Hi guys, uh, good evening and welcome to today's meeting. Um, as you've been, it's been advertised and it's been scheduled, this meeting is specifically for electronic engineers. Uh, people that have studied engineering, uh, mostly in Africa, uh, of African descent, but you have studied a specific type of engineering, which is known as electronics engineering, then this meeting is for you. So I'm going to take a bit of time to give an orientation. We're going to speak three times. And this is going to be the first one. Then I'll come back a second time and a third one. Different schedules. You will get to be informed. Uh, we are creating immediately 11,000 jobs for electronic engineers across Africa. So we're creating 11,000 jobs for people that study the electronic engineering across Africa. So what I want to do today is to give you an understanding of the opportunity, a bit of understanding also of the platform that provides the opportunity, and then let you know how you can be part of it and how you can have something fantastic uh, that you're doing, mostly for the African continent, but at the same time you make money from doing that. So isn't it wonderful that you're helping your continent as an engineer? At the same time, you're getting properly paid for doing that. Now, for most of you, I'm sure you already know that. You've studied this engineering, but there are no jobs. <laughs> and there's no engineering in Africa. <laughs> there's none, my dear. So people are just studying these things, and there's nowhere for them to go to work. There's no project for them to do. There's nothing. People study engineering, and they go and become a marketer in the bank, or they start to sell insurance. Or they meet somebody who now tells them to come and join politics. So it's just a, it's just a, it's, the society is just upside down, my dear. It's just a very disorganized society. And it's been disorganized because we are being led by politicians. Politicians have formed the leadership of Africa. That's something that Europeans have brought here. Europeans brought government. And from government, they called politicians our leaders. Why will somebody who does not produce something be my leader? You don't, you, you don't produce. This is a continent where we're in poverty. We're suffering. We don't have money. We don't have infrastructure. We have nothing going on. We have no jobs. And the leaders are politicians who, what they produce are words. That's what the politicians produce. Words. Just ability to articulate his idea is the end of the job of a politician. So when we have people that are politicians... Leading our continent, people who don't produce, but they are our leaders. That's ridiculous. It's just like somebody who does not play football, but he's the captain of the team. He can't play football, but he's a captain. He can't score goals, but he's a striker. He can't defend, but he's number five. Nobody will let that happen. This is what we let happen in Africa. We are letting people who should not lead us, lead us. Politicians, that's who leads us. In fact, I hate the one when they say, are your leaders? I'm like, who, who, who are you referring to? Who, are you, who made politicians our leaders in Africa? Who made them? Europeans made them the leaders by bringing their system of government. And now we are being led by people who do not produce. This is the problem that we have. We are being led by people who don't, a system that cannot create jobs, that cannot bring real projects. Okay, what's African government doing now? All over Africa. They go to China, they discuss with Chinese. The Chinese will come to do the project in Africa with their engineers, with their workers, with their skilled workers. Then they will finish the project. Then the African government, after all the loans, will come and cut one tape and say, what a fantastic work we have done. So you're listening to me now, and you studied electrical engineering, but you don't have a job. Or you have a job, it's not good enough. It's not what you studied. It's not what you want to do. But we have an opportunity here for you, because we're not politicians. That's why we can provide the kind of leadership that Africa needs. Private sector leadership. Leadership that is focused on production, increasing our GDP. Leadership that is focused on competing. 
leadership that is focused on making sure that our economy starts to thrive. And we're beginning that part with you by creating 11,000 jobs for school engineers. What I'm going to do today is to explain a little bit of that. So you understand, and like I said, it's the first meeting. You understand a little bit of why we're creating this job for these engineers. What the job is, really, they're going to do. And just different parts of it. Then we'll move to the next one and the next conversation where things become a little bit clearer on exactly what you're going to do. Now, we're going to give you a link which will get you on the Black Wall Street platform. By the second or the third meeting, this is just orientation available on social media platforms. But as soon as we're ready to unleash this properly, it will be on our platform, the Black Wall Street platform. And as an engineer, you'll be able to participate in the opportunity. But before I go a little bit into the opportunity, I want to talk about the engineer. Who is this engineer? Because a lot of people are listening to us who are probably not engineers. Or maybe somebody who is an engineer but doesn't understand exactly what we're saying. But I want to remind you of what an engineer is and why engineers are too important to the Africa that we want to build. So who is an engineer? This is from your own engineering information here. It says an engineer is someone who wants to know how and why things work. So you want to know how and why the things work. So that means an engineer has a functional mind, has a mind of function. How does the functions play? How is the problem solved? Now, I don't think there's anybody more important than engineers. Of course, you could say doctors are important because you might die. Doctor, you need doctor. But Africa has never understood that engineers are everything. Everything. Is engineer who made us have a car. Is an engineer. Is an engineer who made us have a bicycle. Is an engineer who made us have an airplane. Is an engineer who made us have a smartphone. Those are all engineers. So we have an underdeveloped African society where we need people who want to say, how do we solve problems? How does it work? And why does it work like that? And even when you dig a little bit further into who an engineer is, they decide to see something. What are the three things the engineer considers? Of course, I'm not going to teach you something you already know that is primary, but this is public information, so we need to be on the same page. The engineer wants to know what the problem is. The engineer wants to know who has the problem. The engineer wants to know why is it important to solve the problem. So there are three things the engineer wants to know. What is the problem? Who has the problem? And what? And why is it important to solve the problem? So as you're an engineer, let me give you answers to that question. What is the problem? Well, we have a lot of problems. For the electrical people, because we're going to deal with different kinds of engineers on the Black Wall Street project to rebuild a new Africa. We're going to talk about a new Africa. That's what politicians do. They write memos. They meet and they do a convention. They spend billions of, of our money. They get and they write a document. That's what they do. They write document, proposal, and they push the document away somewhere. The next politician comes and picks the document and starts his own document again. We're not doing document. We're doing work. Production, not document, not talking. So I want to explain to you what that production is that will get you working as an engineer. And it's something that government is not capable of doing. It's only the private sector who is capable of doing that. Come up with initiatives and platforms and projects that can make sure that you, as an engineer, have a job. Have something you'll do. You'll be proud of doing exactly what you have studied in university, unlike what we see in Africa today. So the electrical engineer, for instance, like we said, what is the problem? Well, electrical engineer, for your information, we have a very big problem. Right now, Africa loses over $70 billion every year in capital flight, money that leaves Africa because of mobile devices. Africans are buying mobile devices every single day. Every single African needs a mobile device. We have 1.3 billion people in our continent. Every single one needs a mobile device. 
they need a tablet, they need a phone, that the kids need something. So there is a need for mobile devices in Africa. Our people are used to them now, they love them. But see the problem. All the mobile devices providers in Africa are foreigners. They are foreign brands. They are foreign corporations. So when they provide the mobile devices, they take the money away from here. So they provide the mobile devices and take the money away. They don't produce the mobile devices here. All the big names are involved, Techno, Samsung, Apple. These are brands that Samsung comes from Korea. Techno comes from China. Infinix comes from China. Apple comes from the US. These are the brands that dominate African market. They dominated 99.999%. They dominated, our people are obsessed with their brands. Our uh, people will use their last money to buy the latest iPhone so they can show off to their friends. And these people don't make these phones here. So we have no part in the production process. That's why you're an engineer, you don't have a job. The reason you don't have a job is that the electrical devices we're using are not made here. But you're an electrical engineer. So you have a very big problem. You live in a society that is not encouraging or patronizing your profession. Why? Because we are not making electrical products in Africa. And because we're not making electrical products in Africa, you don't have a job. You don't have a lucrative opportunity. There's nothing for you to do with all the training, all the skill, all the knowledge. Everything you have gathered is just a waste of time. It's on a piece of paper because you have no real projects going on in the country. Because we are importing everything that we're consuming. And because we don't write paper like politicians. We don't hold conferences like politicians. We don't discuss the issue and come up with manifesto names and issues and other name and other tagline. We don't do that here. We look for a solution to the problem. And in finding a solution to the problem, we create jobs in the production process. We create return on investment for our investors. And that's how you grow the wealth in the society. Because 78 billion dollars, 60 billion dollars, depending on the year. Some years, Africa will spend 80 billion, 75 billion on mobile devices. And the whole money disappears from our continent. No jobs for our people. No return on investment for our investors. No African profits from it. You can imagine something that has $70 billion in possible profit, and we as Africans are not profiting. The money is coming from our society, but we don't benefit from it. How can $70 billion come out of Africa, and Africans are not benefiting from it? Does that mean Africans are slaves? Does that mean Africans are not good enough? They're not worthy to sit on the table? Is that what these brands are saying to us? The only business these brands have with our people are the importers who help them bring in these products. And take our $70 billion every year away from here. They don't pay taxes to our government, most of them. Which taxes? They don't pay any taxes. So as they don't pay taxes, the government has no money to build infrastructure, to make any investments in anything. The government now starts looking for loans from their countries. Can you imagine? China will give some government in Africa $1 billion and a Chinese company will take $50 billion through mobile devices. Who is fooling who here? That's how long they have been deceiving everybody. But it's over now. Hmm. It's over. It's not going to happen again. And that's what this platform is doing. And we're creating an opportunity for all electrical engineers who get to know of this opportunity. So share it with your friend. We are building 101 mobile devices manufacturing 
plants across Africa in 101 locations. The publication will be today on our Facebook page. Again, we are still using Facebook for now until our platform is ready. And then we'll switch to our platform. So for now, you can go on Facebook page tonight and you will see the publication of the 101 locations across Africa where we are building these mobile devices manufacturing centers. Because we must compete with these people. We must. Not just compete, we're going to defeat them from here. We're going to drive them away from Africa. That's for sure. They're going to lose the market. I'm, I guarantee you that. So to do that, there's 101 different locations where we are going to make sure that we're manufacturing these electrical devices, especially mobile phones. We're going to have other factories for other electrical things. You'll get to hear about those ones later. We're going to make fridge here. We're going to make microwaves here. We're going to make air conditioners here. And we have a network to supply to our people. We're going to destroy these people from here. That's for sure. Because we're not their slaves. We're not. But all the while, we've been their slaves for your information. The slavery ends now. Where you will graduate with a certificate, you will study and you can't get a job. Why can't you get a job? Because the things that your people, your own countrymen, your own continent people, the things that they are using are not made here. That's your problem. Two things, they are not made here, the production process. Secondly, we don't have equity, like equity rights, stake, investor. We can get return from selling of the people we don't have. We don't have rights to return. We don't have jobs from the product. So why are we consuming the product? Why are we consuming products that are not made here, that we don't have equity in? Do we have such level of low self-esteem, Africa? Are we that inferior in our mind that we will continue to support people who don't benefit us? Do, is our self-esteem that low that somebody will abuse us and we'll keep giving them our money? We can't continue doing that. We cannot. We cannot continue that. We can't. I can't leave that legacy for my children. I cannot do it. Maybe you can. I cannot leave the legacy of being a slave in my own continent to my children. I cannot pass such a legacy. And if you feel the same way, that you cannot pass such a legacy to your children, then take this platform very seriously because there's no alternative to what we're doing in the whole of Africa. There is no alternative to what we're doing. We're the only people who are very organized to fight these invaders. We're the people that understand exactly what the problem is, how they use us, how they deprive us of our resources, how they dump us with their products, how they keep us in poverty, how they give some little aid and announce it all over the world that they gave aid, yet they're taking hundreds of billions away from here. We know that, and we know how to defeat them. And as you join us in defeating them, then you have a job, you have a fantastic opportunity. You can now go and work in our factories. You can be part of a great movement. You can be proud that you are an engineer, a real one, one that will make something happen. Now you have something to make happen, mobile devices. So we have a team of 25 people that we have selected. We're still selecting them. You can join that team if, you, if you're really capable. Of young African engineers, we have companies in Asia that we have partnered with. These companies in Asia will work in tandem with you to set up these factories across Africa. They will be able to employ you. They will be able to employ our people. And across each of those factories, all those places across Africa, we're the factory, we also building communities around them. Subdivisions, American style, where people can live and be able to go to that factory or be part of what that factory is doing. So each factory has a subdivision, a housing estate attached to it. That's how we intend to bring development to our people, one area after the other. But right now, it's about mobile devices. What other ideas that will not concern you? I'm telling you about the one that concerns you. You can come in right now and be part of us as an engineer. 
associated with the Black Wall Street, that we are going to fight. And luckily for you, the first battle of the economic war is mobile devices. So by being part of this platform, you have the opportunity to fight Africa's first economic war by manufacturing quality mobile devices. You see the ones that we have. This is our tablet here. It's fantastic. You see our phone. But we don't like the fact that we're not making these things here. Right now, we have equity rights in it, but we don't have production rights. Equity right means is our brand. We own the brand, but it's made overseas, and we're not comfortable with that. So before we go real public, we want to make sure we start making it here. And that's why you have to come into the picture. 101 locations. Each location will have 100 for now. Minimum 100 electrical engineers. So it's 100 times 101 locations means we're going to employ around 11,000 people. Or 10,000, something like that. 10,100 people. So if you're an engineer listening to me, it's a fantastic opportunity for you. In electronics engineering, for you to be able to work with us and make phones for Africa, the no door prop ban. Work with us to build these phones here. We will give you everything that you need. We have technical partners. We'll be able to support you with the capital. We'll be able to set up this factory simultaneously across the continent. Simultaneously. We're not all doing one, two, no. At the same time, we're setting up all 100 of them. And we'll be able to move those from those factories. We have our system with the redirect mall. So we'll be able to move it from there to the warehouse, from the warehouse to the outlets. You have a better understanding exactly how these things work as you become part of our platform. But it's important for you to know exactly what it is that we're offering you, which is an opportunity for you to come and help us build Africa by helping us build 101 different mobile devices manufacturing outlets across the continent. Now, a little bit more about those 101 locations. We are naming them after Pan-Africanists, people who have championed the cause of Pan-Africanism. What is Pan-Africanism? Pan-Africanism is the people who have understood from day one that when they divided Africa, it was the worst thing that happened to us. When they came and broke out all those stupid countries, Nigeria, Ghana, this and that, Syria, it was the worst thing that happened. Because you conquer a people by dividing them. So they divided us so they can conquer us. And Pan-Africanists for the past 50, 70, 80 years, whatever long it's been, have been championing for all Africans to see themselves as one. How can an African, 20 African countries would refer to themselves as Francophone. What is that? Francophone. It means you're loyal to France. One tiny country in Europe. Are you joking? You're answering Francophone. You have over 300 million Africans, 400 million Africans who are in all these French-speaking African countries. Answering Francophone. Meaning you're loyal to one tiny country of 40 million people in Europe. That's disgusting, Africa. We can't let that continue. They are not our masters. They are not. They deceived our forefathers. They cannot deceive us. They're not our masters. So we're not francophone. We are not anglophone. We are Africa. That's how we were before they came here. And that's how we must go back to. And part of going back to that is this 101 factories honoring those people who were saying we are all Africans. Each of those factories will be named. You'll see their names on the Facebook page. Kwame Nkrumah, the first African Union president, who said no. This independence is bullshit. He said it. He said this, this is nonsense, independence. He's the first president of Ghana. He said we need to have United States of Africa. It's what we need. We don't need this independence. And you know what they did? I'll give you a little bit of history. They formed a team who now went and formed the African Union to destabilize that plan. African Union was planted by Europeans as a way to destabilize the plan of one African government. That's why if you go to African Union headquarters right now, it's built 100% by China. 100%. It is funded by European Union and built by China. So how is that African Union? You tell me. Tell me how something that is funded by European Union and built by China, the whole building, the whole telecommunication, everything they have is built by China, funded by Europe. And you say it's called African Union. You must be out of your mind. 
That thing was planted to destroy Kwame Nkrumah's plan of the United Africa, one government. It's the only way we can live in this place. It's the only way we can leverage on our resources, enjoy our large markets where we have one point something billion Africans, where you can make those phones now. We know that we have our people. The market is there. We are massive. We can sell 100 million phones. We can use the money and put in our infrastructure. We can invest in other companies and create jobs. We can, instead of the money disappearing from here, you see, right now the money is disappearing from here. That's 70 billion. Every year. Every year. You don't understand. It's not once in a while. The money goes away every year. Samsung takes. Techno takes. Samsung takes to Korea. Apple takes to US. Techno takes to, uh, what's the other one? To China. Infinix takes to China. They all take 70 billion dollars every single year. So it takes. So if you're an engineer, you should be very angry. Angry. And the anger should be, how am I going to solve this? By making sure that I'm part of this. I'm making sure I work in those factories. I make those phones. Quality phones that Africans will be proud of. Of course, we have incentives to keep the Africans buying the phone. But incentives are not enough. You must make sure that the phones are durable. They are quality. We don't want engineers who have certificates. We don't want certificates here. We want people who love engineering. People who are interested in making something. We want to see your certificate, my friend. Of course, we don't disrespect the fact that you went to university. Yeah, whatever. We don't care. Let that certificate translate to, I know how phones work. I can make a nicer smartphone. I want to see a Steve Jobs, actually. I want to see one. I want to see somebody with some smart ideas inside of that phone factory. Because remember, yeah, see, all the people are engineers, software engineers, electrical engineers. Look at that guy, um, Henry Ford. Henry Ford changed the issue of cars. Before, cars were so expensive, people couldn't afford them. Henry Ford said what? I'm going to find a way to break down this cost of cars. And he did. The assembly line thing came from Henry Ford. And that's how Ford Motors became everything. And people started copying him. And then a lot of people could afford cars. Right now in Africa, we still don't make cars here. Every time, I'm on, every time I see traffic in Africa, my heart skips. You know why? I look at the amount of cars there, and I wonder how much money has left our continent through those cars. Every time I'm in traffic, I can't help it. I look at Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Toyota, I wonder. How, and those cars are very expensive. So you can imagine how many hundreds of billions of dollars we have shipped away to this country. So we have to make cars, cheap cars too. We're not gonna, uh, but that's not your, your issue right now. Your issue now is phone. You see, Africa is so disorganized. We need engineers everywhere. We have to make cars, we have to make phones, we have to make fridge, we have to make, we have to make two, even this camera I'm using to talk to, we have to make our own. We have to make it here. Yeah. As we make, jobs are created, investment returns. Jobs, investment returns. Jobs, invest, that's it. Economic war is about more people with more jobs, more people with investment return. That's it. That's how you grow prosperity in the African society. More jobs, more investment return. More jobs, more investment return. So every sector we go into, we crash the sector, make sure Africans are employed through the sector, and make sure Africans get return on investment through that sector. We cannot be sitting here in Africa and feeding somebody in China. Are you joking? We are in China, we are feeding somebody in Europe. We can't be doing that. We can't be a some fat cat sits sit, sit in his office that doesn't care about Africa. But the Africans have bought your phone, 20 million of them. Really? Okay, yeah, bring their money, let's spend. And your village has no water, no electricity. Your hospitals are nonsense. And you're blaming your government. And you're sending the money that you have away from here. My friend, we're tired of our preach. I don't, I don't want to discuss that anymore. And if you have not watched our videos, you better go and catch up. Don't just come and listen to this one. I think you understand. Nah, 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 nah. Go and watch the whole thing. Watch all the, we have over see something videos. I've covered so many different topics. You better go and watch each and every single one of them. So you can catch up. Because, you know, you don't, don't, know, we don't even know what we're talking about. So go and watch the videos. Understand the shows. Uh, get the information. Because it's knowledge that will liberate you. So you need to go and watch all the videos, understand what we have been discussing the whole time. 
Understand the foundation of our movement. Understand that we are creating a new African nation. Void of all the boundaries. One Africa, one continent, one country, one place. That's how it's supposed to be. Why would China be one billion people and one country? India, one billion people, one country. Then they come here and divide us into small, small fragments so that we are weak, so that we can't fight. That's the whole idea. But we're changing that through this platform. By building those factories, first of all, because the mobile device is the first battle in the war. It's the first battle. It's where we show them that we are serious. It's where we bury brands. We bury. We take something like Techno, Samsung, we bury. bury. You don't know what I mean. IP, rest in peace. We bury, they go away. That's what they do. When we bury the mobile devices, we'll come to TV, we bury them there. We come to fridge, we'll bury them there. We're going to bury these people away from our society. And you just see jobs everywhere. You see return on investment everywhere. You see people happy, prospering, building houses, community. This is our money. It's our money. It's been going away. We're going to trap and reinvest. That's our principle. That's how we work here. We trap, we reinvest. All the way until we start taking the one from abroad. Mm. So first of all, let's make these phones from you. Let's put these phones in the hands of one billion Africans. Let's put mobile devices, kids' tablets in the hands of kids. Let's put phones in the hands of people, different kinds of phones, smartphones. And one thing you have to know about phones is that when you have phone in people's hand that is your brand, it is easy for you to communicate to those people. It's easy for us to put our apps because we have 28 different apps. We're going to embed those apps inside the phone. We have apps that deal with all basic human needs. So the phone is a must-win battle for us. When we win that battle, the rest of the battle will be a little bit easier. Because now most of the people have our devices in their hands. So I'm going to round up by letting you know that if you're an engineer... Electrical engineer is a wonderful opportunity for you. There are requirements, of course, but we can't go into that right now. Uh, right now, just for you to be informed that there's a wonderful opportunity. We are creating jobs for about 11,000 engineers. They're going to work across 101 factories across Africa. We have 25 engineers right now that are in a group that are working on a plan on what the factory will look like. And we're also dealing with the people that we have partnered with in Asia, in Hong Kong specifically. And they're going to be part of what we're doing, bringing equipment here, helping in technical transfer program to our local engineers. And that's how we intend to make sure that we're making these phones here, send it to Africans here, retain the world in our society. So this is our first major battle in the economic war. And you can't afford to fail us. And also part of your coming in, because I have to mention this now, even though you won't understand the detail, Every person we are admitting is bringing one distributor. For us to admit you here, after checking the system, we'll check all your certifications and whatever you have to submit. You're going to apply on our platform. This one is just orientation. When you apply on our platform, the system will authenticate you and we're comfortable with you. You're going to bring one distributor, one. So you better start looking for that distributor right now. So those of you that go and buy from China and bring here, they're not going to come and buy from those factories. But they don't have to even touch the product. We'll explain that to you later. Because we have a distribution outlet. We have the Red Red Mall. We have the outlets. We have all that. So we have a way to get the product to the people. But we'll see those distributors are coming. And we'll explain that to you probably the next time we're going to talk. But for now, understand that there's a huge potential for us to take advantage of Africa in the mobile devices arena. We're building 101 of these factories across Africa. We'll be able to create jobs for our engineers. Electrical engineers will be able to plant you in these 101 locations. And they are named in honor of Pan-Africanists. I was explaining that earlier. Pan-Africanists are those people who have said, no, we should be, have been one Africa the whole time. And there are so many. Muhammad Ali is one of them. Marcos Gave is one of them. There are so many. So, uh, what's his name? What's, uh, the guy from Tanzania. Um, what was his name? Uh, from Tanzania. Uh, Judas Nyerere is one of them. So we've had a lot of Africans, great Africans. Lucky Dube, you know. They've all said the same thing. Now we need to be Africans. And we're honoring those people. Dr. King, Malcolm X. You should be very proud. 
that the fact that you are part of is honoring legends. People, Tupac Shaku, uh, we're honoring him too with those factories. So you will see the names. Go on the line. You'll see the names of people we are honoring. Each of those factories will be named after those people because it's time for Africa to rise. So Africa is rising. Africa must honor. There's something I like from there. I think the Nigerian anthem. It says, the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain. See that? That's a vow each generation must make. That the labor of the heroes past shall not be in vain. And the heroes past, Marcus Garvey, mm. Malcolm X, Dr. King. Those are the heroes past. Julius Schneider, Kwame Nkrumah, we've mentioned them. Even living right now, a lot of them are still living. President Museveni, one of the greatest ones. He has brought over 3 million Africans as refugees from all across Africa to his own country, taking care of them with little or no resources. That's the Pan-Africanist. He has brought peace all across very many, many African countries around here. That's a Pan-Africanist. PLO, that's a Pan-Africanist. Julius Malema in South Africa, who is complaining about the way they treat other Africans. That's a Pan-Africanist. We are honoring them too. So we're honoring a lot of Pan-Africanists, 101 of them, so that our next generation will know it's a good thing for you to care about your fellow African. It's a good thing for you to care about Africans wherever you see them, even if it's in America, even if it's in the UK. Care about your fellow Africans. Care. Of course, care about humanity in general, but care mostly about your fellow Africans because charity begins at home, is what they say. And we're honoring these people, these phone factories, because they have cared about their fellow Africans. So I'm going to end on that note today. They're also going to publish the material, if you haven't read it, just a little flyer that explains this meeting that we have had today. There's a little orientation about what it is. Remember they're capping? We're building 101 phone factories. As soon as the platform is on, you will receive the notification for the second training, the third training, then you get the link. You'll be able to apply for the job. Then you'll be able to process through the job. Then they'll send you to the factory you work. They'll train you through the platform, train you physically, train you on site, assimilate you into the, into the system until we comfortably create very good paying jobs for 11,000 African electrical engineers. And for your information, before I go, we are not paying you anything less than $4,000 per person for this position. Some of you earn a little bit more, but that's the minimum money that we're paying. See? Because some of you will be like, oh, how much is the job? That's what we're paying. $4,000 per month in salary, as minimum. Some could earn more. With bonuses, with, with, with health care, with retirement plans. So you'll be able to relax and put in your best into making sure that we make mobile devices that can compete with anybody else anywhere in the world. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And I sincerely hope that you take this seriously as Black Wall Street welcomes the Association of African Electronic Engineers. And on this note, we say, Africa first, Africa first, Africa first, economic war, we are ready for them. Join us to ensure that your pocket is doing well. <laughs>